right, guys, so here she is. 2009 KX250F. Um, bought it off Facebook Marketplace for 1300 bucks. Um, bought it locked up, taking a chance here. She ain't budging, so hopefully we get a steal. Hopefully, you know, it's not the bottom end. Well, I'm assuming it is the bottom end. The guy I bought it from, he just received the bike um, on a trade. And uh, he just wanted nothing to do with it. He didn't want to deal with it or anything like that. Uh, we'll give you a little walk around of the bike here. I do have the plastics, but um, it didn't come with any bolts and everything like that. The tank um, I've got as well. It just wasn't bolted in. So I went ahead and popped that off just in case, you know. But uh, we've got a filter here. It's hanging out. You know, she's she's seen better days. But, you know, it could be good bones. A couple of problems I noticed is the front fork um the height on the forks compared to the upper triple cl uh triple clamp is way high it's actually high enough where it's actually starting to hit the bars the bars are loose so you could just move those whittly diddly it's got a uh, front brake lever delete or an unbreakable uh since it's already broken and same thing with the clutch i've seen a couple race tech stickers here um I'll, once I dive into the bike more, I'll figure that out. But front front fenders, obviously, it looks like the bike's been sitting outside. Um, front tires in decent shape. The wheel bearings don't feel too bad. Um, as far as the engine goes, it looks like there may have been, you know, there's some gasket maker here. Um, I don't know if anyone ever pulled it apart and diagnosed it or not, but I'm not sure. The chain is quite loose. Um, Rear suspension looks okay, you know, no leaks, no crazy things like that. Um, rear wheel bearings look good. The exhaust here, factory mounting position for it, looks good. It's all RTV'd up. It's actually, it's an FMF. Would you look at that? So yeah, let's start digging into this guy um, and see if we could hopefully get it running or if we got a, you know, spend a whole bunch of money and rebuild that bottom end. I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, I think this was a trail bike. And there's a possibility that, you know, maybe the piston hot seized or it ran out of oil and the crank is seized up. Um, hoping it's something simple and crazy. You know, hopefully, I'm hoping it didn't drop a valve and, you know, just destroy the jug or nothing. But we're going to tear into it right now. We'll see what's going on. Fingers crossed. Let's see, guys. So I think besides immediately deeming the bottom end is shot, um, the guy I bought it from said the guy that he got it from said that it needed new crank bearings, uh, that those were locked up. But I just want to, you know, look at it myself, see if I could find anything. So first thing we're going to go ahead and do here is I'm just going to pop this drain plug loose or not drain plug, fill cap and just see if I can see oil uh, sitting on the clutch plates at least. If it's dry, you know, maybe the um, uh, person before me drained it, but it looks like there's a bit of residual sitting on the top. I don't see a sight glass on the side. Usually they'll have a, oh, nope, never mind. I stand corrected, there is a sight glass. So let's go ahead and take a look at the sight glass and see if we have any oil. I'll probably end up draining it and see if we get any metal chunks, but I always like to just look, uh, usually before I'll diagnose it as a, uh, you know, bad crank or what have you, I usually like to pull off the top end. Um, I like to see if the cams are, uh, see if the cams got like major wear on them, like looks like the engine was starved to oil. So that's usually the second thing I do. It's the easiest, it's better in splitting cases and immediately diagnosing it. So let's take a gander at this sight glass. All right, so taking a look at the sight glass, um, it's pretty hard for you guys to see, but there is some oil in there, not a whole lot, but there is some, there you go, there you can see it. You can see the, the minimum line and the maximum line on there. Uh, it looks like we're sitting a little bit below the minimum line. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, it's a good thing that there's oil in it. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling this valve cover off and see what our cams look like see if there's a bunch of wear on those you know maybe because if if the cams ended up being super worn out i would probably start from the top to the bottom 
uh, it, you know, I'd take the valve cover off, take the cams out, then the head, and just start and see what we got on the rod, you know? Because if, if our cams, our top end's all worn out, we could have a hot seize piston or, you know, a, a no lubrication scenario. So take a look at it. Um, gonna pop off the valve cover and see what's going on up there. All right, we'll start by pulling out our spark plug. That looks good, at least there's no oil on the uh, end of the coil there. These are Allen screws, or Allen head screws. I know I'm using the Torx, but they work just as well. Believe it or not. I wouldn't go cramming anything crazy in there, but. All right, set these aside. Wow, that was not stuck at all. I'm surprised. Top of the valve cover is looking pretty good. Set it down. So as far as the lobes go, they look pretty good. Um, wow. Oh, wow. Look at this. I don't know. Let's see if you guys can see. Let me get you at a better angle. This is crazy. Look at this. This cam chain. See that? That cam chain is, for one, way too tight. And for two, it has found its way and it's worked itself off of that sprocket. I don't know if that happened when the engine ceased. If, you know, just... The apps, you know, cranking the thing over and just locking up like that. But, oh, no, look at that. It's actually behind the teeth on this intake cam sprocket. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pop this tensioner off. Uh, we're going to fix that, double check the timing, um, and see, hopefully, you know, if I pull this off, maybe that's why the engine seized. Wouldn't that be crazy? I mean, I can't get that lucky, but we're going to find out. So... I'll start by taking off this tensioner here. Okay, so it looks like we got two eight mils and a 14. Start by pulling these guys off. You gotta love how they put these tensioners in. Right by the carbs. They're sometimes hard to get these little pesky bolts out, but these are coming out pretty easy. There's one. This other guy. I usually don't bother popping the center uh, bolt out because if you just take these two bolts out, it, it releases the tension just fine. So I'm gonna work this out of there. Yep, there she goes. Oh yeah. The tensioner doesn't look like it's, it was that far out. How's the ratcheting mechanism working? Feels okay. That spring inside might be a hair a week. Um, I don't know if it's OEM tensioner or not. It it looks somewhat new. I mean, it's scraped up a bit, but okay. All right, so you guys can see now that I got this, this chain is now loose with that tensioner. Um, and now it's sitting on the sprockets. I mean, that's way, way too low. So, um, this intake cam is in a cycle right now and the exhaust cam is free. So, I am gonna go ahead, um, I'm gonna put the tensioner back on where it's sitting now, uh, just get some tension on that chain and then see if we have any movement in the crank. Maybe we free it up a little bit. Cause I mean, if this chain is sitting there bound up like that, as tight as it was, that would absolutely cause some kind of, um, it, would, it would absolutely cause a seize, you know, and not necessarily a seize, but a lockup, you know, as people would think it would be. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put that texture back in. Uh, we're gonna get some tension on that chain and then see if we maybe have a rotation. All right, so. Go ahead and pull up this sucker back in. Got some tension out of it, that's good. Oh yeah, I think once we get these bolts tight, we're gonna be perfect on the cam chain tension.
Not quite sure where the timing's at, so when I do this, I want to be very careful. Um, all right, let's start by, besides just wailing on the Kickstarter, I want to, uh, wow, that came out way easier than I thought it would. Um, I want to do it slowly by hand, just in case this timing's way out, um, so I don't, you know, go ahead and kick it and then contact a piston with a valve and cause all sorts of issues. Someone did a number on this plug, holy. There we go, we got it loose. Nothing a little hammer can't fix, huh? All right, what do we got here? Looks like a 14 millimeter. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn over really slow here if I can. You're kidding me, we got movement, guys. No way. We're moving. Try to line up this timing mark here. I can't believe that right now. Okay, we just stopped. All right, so I think we're having a, a contact issue right now, which is not 100% what I wanna hear. I can almost, yep, okay, so we got contact. The exhaust cam is almost in time um, assuming that the top mark is supposed to be 90 with the deck of the head and the side mark is supposed to be almost parallel. That's assuming, ooh, decompression lever seems to be working just a tad loose. So we're going to pull these cam caps off, um, get the cams out of there and, uh, see if we could time this engine. All right. So I've got that cam chain tensioner off, so we've got a little bit of play here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start popping these cam caps off. I think I'm gonna have to swap over. Yep, not gonna be able to reach that one, okay. Oh, that could have been bad. Go ahead and slide that back in there. Grab a trusty quarter inch ratchet. Torque on those feel pretty good. Looks like we're forgetting one. Go ahead and grab that. You could almost see just in the orientation of these cams alone. It looks off. This cam almost looks like about 90 degrees out because generally at top dead center, the exhaust cam will be facing the front of the bike and the intake cam will be facing the rear of the bike. But it's not the case for everything, but like as a general rule of thumb, um, usually that's, that's something you're looking for. Get you set up here again. See how this cam cap comes off? Pretty nice. All right, let's take a look here. Um, not too bad. It looks like there's some dielectric grease or something on there. Something really nasty. Yuck. Where it doesn't look terrible. Um, somewhat bad on this one, but you can't feel it. Um, I would probably say it's good enough to run, um, but we'll diagnose further. I always like to pull out the spark plug as well. When I'm uh, timing an engine, it always helps with... I just like to, you know, to make sure that the piston's at top dead center, you know, because sometimes you can have a, a strip woodruff key on the flywheel and it'll throw your timing out there so i just like to verify that the timing mark on the piston or the timing mark on the flywheel matches if this uh, piston's actually a top dead center
Okay. So I'm gonna rotate the flywheel. I know the cams aren't tight, so I've got a timing mark there. It looks like just one and a couple of actual timing marks in the flywheel house. Um, but I don't think we're at top dead center. Maybe we have to go one more revolution. I don't really like doing this with the cams off, but just trying to get us at a baseline here. Um, I'm just kind of using this as a way not to drop the the cam chain down in the valley here. Okay, right now we've got a piston at top dead center and we've got a line. So we're, we are perfectly timed. Well, we are perfectly lined up to be timed. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the Kawasaki manual um, and see what our timing's supposed to be on these two camshafts. Cause right now, um, I'm assuming this exhaust cam is fine uh, with the markings, but the intake cam looks uh, about 90 degrees out. Um, get you guys in a closer here to show you. So right now we've got the timing mark lined up on the flywheel. As you can see here, we've got one of these dots on the exhaust cam facing straight up and this other dot is about level with the head and on our intake cam uh, we can't even see the dots it looks like we're about nine degrees out so let's go ahead and check the kawasaki manual uh for the 250f09 and uh see how to time this thing all right so it looks like we want our second mark lined up with the mark in the flywheel, which we have. And then, like we predicted, we'll want basically 90 degrees, this on the exhaust cam, this, this punch mark will want level with the cylinder head, and this punch mark on the intake cam will want level with the cylinder head. So let's go ahead and fix that uh, intake cam and tighten up the timing chain and see what we got. All right, so we are going to want, without moving the flywheel, a horrendous amount. Oh wow, we're about 180 degrees out. That's, uh, that's scary. Get this chain worked around. And right about there. It's kind of difficult doing this from the other side of the bike. I'm not used to this. How's that look? Let's see. There we go. I just do it comp competently. Just to ensure our marks are lined up down here. So you can see that little mark on the flywheel is lining up with the mark on the flywheel cover. And we'll uh, slightly pull this cam this way, just a hair. Get this cable out of the way. put that cam cap back on uh, throw the tensioner in see what this thing does I might as well check the valve clearance while I got the, the valve the uh, valve cover off as well all right so if you could see we've got some I always forget the name of them but these alignment rings 
and we want to line those up with the alignment rings on the camshafts. So that can be a bit challenging, um, but we're going to go ahead. Our cams aren't directly lined up right now, so I'm just going to slide this intake over here. And now you can see as well, like I was saying earlier, intake and exhaust, exhaust and intake cams, they're 180 degrees apart facing opposite ways. That's generally the rule of thumb. Um, I have struggled with these cam caps many of times with those rings and I'm just hoping that this time works out good. I think we just got it. Nope. I gotta go ahead and you're probably better off honestly installing these rings onto the camshafts. Definitely want those rings on the camshafts. Okay, let's try again, round two. All right, there we go. Go ahead, get those bolts in, torque them to spec, and go from there. All right, so for our intake cam, we're supposed to be sitting at a 0 0.0039 or 0 0.10, so this will do us just fine. Um, the range is the range is 0 0.10 to 0.15, so I'm going on the smallest end right now to uh, see if we have an issue. Okay, 0 0.010 is not fitting in this side. Okay, 0 0.010 is just not fitting whatsoever. So, boy, what's our valve clearance zero? Thou of an inch, let's see if we can get it in there. This is basically like a piece of tin foil thinner actually nothing won't even go in and this is the smallest feeler gauge I have so it's touching um, there's no clearance there so um, let's check the exhaust okay so our exhaust valve spec is 0.17 to 0.22 for the clearance so let's see if we can get this guy in yep Okay, it's nice and tight, so that is right in spec and right in spec. So we're dealing with an intake cam problem. Let's go ahead and pop these buckets off and see what kind of shims we're dealing with under it. Um, I'm in a bit of a predicament right now because I don't have my micrometer here. It's actually at work. So I'm thinking about just doing a guessing game See if I can get this thing to run. So I just kicked this thing over about 30 times um, it wants to start but nothing yet we've got a little bit our varnish in the cap and the gas I thought I was recording but the gas that came out of the carburetor was a nice tint of yellow all right we got that carb off now got it on the bench we're gonna go ahead and pull this float bowl and see what the state of our jets are. All right, let's get this thing off of here. Mm, float bowl's a little dirty, it doesn't look terrible. All right, let's get this. That's nice and clear. 
This pilot jet, very, very seized. Had to do a little vice grip trick. It's pretty small, you can't get nothing in there either. Let's get this guy out of there. See what we're dealing with. So we're clear on the side. Oh yeah, we're slightly clogged in the pilot. All right, so after some frustrating battles, we're back to having the cams pulled out of the bike because we have just made a very interesting discovery. Pulled the carb apart, adjusted the valves, redid the timing, did all this over and over and over again, and I just could not get the bike to run. It would just sit there and fire. Uh, it would fire a little bit, uh, you know, go roar, and then just die out. So it wouldn't even idle, it wouldn't really, it wouldn't really start. So. Kept looking at it, scratching my head, finally figured out the problem. This here is the intake camshaft, and this is the exhaust camshaft. And these Cowies, uh, especially in this year, have a problem of spinning this cam gear on the actual camshaft. So there's a hole in this camshaft right here, and that should line up with the hole in the cam lobe on the end here. As you can see, it is nowhere near, it's about two and a half teeth off of these holes lining up so this cam gear has actually slipped on the cam now i've got another intake cam on the way and this exhaust cam looks fine uh it doesn't look like it slipped any the way i noticed it is because the camshafts were in the bike and you could see that this cam was facing the uh the front of the bike just fine just like this here i'll try to give you an example set these cams up like this and this other cam while the bike was perfectly timed this other cam was sitting like that. And I finally noticed it. it was more like that. That's about where it was. And I'm like, huh, wait a minute. So I started to dig into it, research these cowies a little bit because I'm usually a Honda guy. I've usually always had Honda dirt bikes. Um, I've only really worked on the Honda four strokes. I've worked on a couple cowies and a couple Zooks, but not really, I've never really dug into the cowies too much, but yeah. So we've got a cam on the way as long as a whole bunch of other parts coming for this thing. So. That is gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, I should have the parts in at the end of this week. Once we get the parts in, uh, we're gonna do a quick little, um, we're gonna throw these in, get the bike running, then we're gonna install some other parts, and then we will actually really get going on this build. So yeah, after all that time and headache, it was a spun cam gear that whole time. So she should run great, compression's great, um, chain seems good, texture seems good, the carbs cleaned out. I've got a rebuild kit coming for it as well, but, and also a hot start uh, billet aluminum uh, adapter for the threads because the hot starts stripped out. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, we will be back very, very soon. Hopefully at the end of this week, I'll have the parts in and we will be throwing that sucker in and see what happens. Thank you guys. See you next time.